single rotor helicopters. From the moment Leonardo da Vinci sketched his aerial screw in 1489, humanity dreamed of vertical flight. However, it wasn't until the early 20th century that this dream began to take shape. The 1920s saw Spanish engineer Juan de la Sierva revolutionizing aviation with his autogyro C4, achieving its first flight in January 1923 and introducing the crucial principle of autorotation, a safety feature still vital in modern helicopters. The real breakthrough came from an unlikely hero, Igor Sikorsky, a Russian immigrant in America. After facing numerous challenges including experiments from 1909 to 1939 with various configurations and 28 failed attempts, his VS-300 finally cracked the code that others couldn't. At its heart, a single rotor helicopter is brilliantly simple. One main rotor for lift and thrust, one tail rotor to counteract torque. Unlike tilt rotors or multi-rotor VTOLs that need complex transformations, helicopters use cyclic pitch, tilting their rotor disc to move in any direction. While the tilt rotors might be faster and quadcopters more stable, single rotor helicopters remain unmatched in versatility, offering an ideal balance of simplicity, efficiency, and control. Control. World War II accelerated development with the Sikorsky R-4, the first mass-produced helicopter. But it was Vietnam that truly showcased their military value. The Bell UH-1 Huey became legendary, its distinctive wop-wop sound, created by its two-bladed rotor system interacting with disturbed air, echoing through history as it transformed modern warfare. Today, these mechanical marvels evolve further. The UH-60 Black Hawk serves in militaries worldwide, while the Bell 505, successor to the legendary 260 Jet Ranger leads civilian operations. In medical emergencies, the twin engine Airbus H135 family demonstrates the perfect balance of safety and performance. Innovation never stops. The Sikorsky S97 Raider, with its coaxial rotor system and pusher propeller, achieves speeds beyond 250 knots, 288 miles per hour, while emerging hybrid electric technology promises even greater capabilities. After 80 years, Sikorsky's vision endures. Single rotor helicopters remain the most versatile air aircraft in history, a testament to the power of human ingenuity. Multi-rotor systems. The journey of multi-rotor aircraft began with a different dream, not of single powerful rotors, but of multiple synchronized blades dancing in perfect harmony. In 1907, the Breguet brothers and Professor Charles Richet dared to challenge convention with their gyroplane number one. In 1922, Dr. George de Bothazat, supported by the U.S. Army, created the Flying Octopus, the first successful quadcopter. Though limited in capability, it planted the seeds for a revolution in military aviation. Unlike traditional helicopters, multi-rotors achieve stability through distributed lift, four or more rotors working in precise opposition. While sacrificing raw power, they gain unprecedented agility and stealth. No complex transmissions, no tail rotors, just pure electronic precision. The digital revolution of the 1990s unleashed their true potential. Advanced microprocessors and sensors finally made stable multi-rotor flight practical. Companies like DJI and Parrot transformed hobby aircraft into military-grade platforms. In modern warfare, multi-rotors have become force multipliers. The Turkish Bayraktar Mini UAV provides battlefield reconnaissance. The U.S. Army's Black Hornet, barely larger than a smartphone, lets soldiers see around corners without exposure. The Quantum Systems Vector creates real-time combat maps, while Instant IM NK3 gives infantry squad-level aerial superiority. Swarm technology has revolutionized tactics. DARPA's Gremlins program demonstrates how drones swarms can overwhelm air defenses. The Raytheon Coyote hunts enemy drones, while Andoril's Ghost 4 provides persistent battlefield surveillance. The Marine Corps Tactical Resupply Vehicle delivers critical supplies under fire. Convertible VTOL Aircraft the dream of combining vertical takeoff with fixed-wing speed has captivated aviation pioneers since the 1930s. These shape-shifting marvels promise something revolutionary, the ability to land like a helicopter but fly like a plane. In 1951, German engineer Heinrich Focke's FA-269 introduced the tilting propeller concept. A decade later, Robert Lichten's Bell XV-3 made history as the first successful tilt rotor, reaching speeds of 184 miles per hour, despite technical challenges that nearly killed the program. Three main approaches emerged. Tilt rotors like the Osprey, tilt wings like the CL-84, and stop rotors like the X-50 Dragonfly. Each solved the vertical flight equation differently, but tilt rotors proved most 
practical. By rotating their engine nacelles, they transform from hover to forward flight in approximately 60 seconds. The XV-15 research aircraft broke barriers in the 1970s, logging over 700 flight hours. This persistence led to the V-22 Osprey in 1989, which despite early setbacks, now cruises at 316 miles per hour with a range of 1,150 nautical miles. In combat, these capabilities prove decisive. Ospreys deliver Marines from ships 500 miles inland without refueling. During Operation Iraqi Freedom, they conducted long-range raids impossible for conventional helicopters. The CV-22 variant gives Special Forces unprecedented reach in hostile territory. New designs keep emerging. The TURN program develops deck-launched surveillance aircraft. The V-247 drone combines tilt-rotor versatility with unmanned capabilities. International programs like China's AV-500 W Tiltroder and Russia's VRT-300 UAV show this revolution is global, marking aviation's ongoing evolution. Jet-powered VTOL aircraft The dream of jet-powered vertical flight emerged from a different vision, not of rotating blades or tilting wings, but of raw thrust itself. In the 1950s, French engineer Michel Wibault dared to imagine redirecting jet exhaust straight down, sparking a revolution that would change aerial warfare forever. The breakthrough came when Bristol engine company's Gordon Lewis developed the revolutionary Pegasus engine. In 1960, Hawker Sidney Cam and test pilot Bill Bedford turned theory into reality with the P-1127, defying skeptics to achieve the first successful jet-powered hover to forward flight transition. Unlike helicopters or tilt rotors, these machines harness pure jet thrust for vertical flight. The Harrier's ingenious four-nozzle system rotates exhaust downward, while the F-35B combines a shaft-driven lift fan with a three-bearing swivel nozzle. Technology partly evolved from the Soviet Yak-1 141's innovations. The Harrier proved its worth in the Falklands War, where its vertical capability allowed operations from makeshift forward bases. The Soviet Yak-38 showed similar capabilities from aircraft carriers, while today's F-35B brings stealth to vertical flight, operating from amphibious assault ships with unprecedented effectiveness. Innovation continues globally. India's AMCA and Russia's next-generation programs push supersonic VTOL boundaries, while new propulsion technologies promise even greater capabilities for future combat aircraft. Fan-powered VTOL aircraft The dream for fan-powered vertical flight emerged from a bold new approach. Not rotating blades, tilting wings, or vectored thrust, but powerful, ducted fans embedded seamlessly within the aircraft structure. In 1956, the U.S. Army and Ryan Aeronautical Company, working with GE's lift fan technology, developed the XV-5A, designed to generate 12,500 pounds of thrust through fans concealed within the aircraft's frame. A breakthrough came when GE developed the X353-5 lift fan system for the XV-5A, embedding turbine-driven fans in the wings and fuselage to enable stable vertical lift. In 1964, test pilot Jack Schweibold showcased this technology, though the program faced tragic setbacks with two fatal crashes in 1965 and 1966. Fan-powered VTOL offered unique advantages over exposed rotor helicopters or jets with hot exhausts. The XV-5A's 62.5-inch lift fans enabled safer ground operations and demonstrated improved hover efficiency with significantly reduced noise and heat signatures. The XV-5B iteration refined the concept with over 250 test flights. As the technology evolved, designers began combining fan and jet systems. Germany's VFW VAK 191B integrated lift engines with thrust vectoring, while the Soviet Yak-38 used dedicated lift jets. This evolution culminated in the F-35B's advanced lift system, which generates over 20,000 pounds of thrust through a 50-inch fan combined with a swivel nozzle, representing the most sophisticated integration of fan and jet technology to date. Today, the legacy of fan-powered flight continues through new interpretations. DARPA's Crane program explores distributed propulsion using advanced fan technology, while military research continues pushing the boundaries of embedded lift fan applications for future combat aircraft. Tailsitter VTOL aircraft The dream of tailsitter flight emerged from a unique naval vision not of conventional takeoffs or complex transformations, but of aircraft that could literally stand on their tails, launch vertically, and then flip horizontally for normal flight. In 1950, the U.S. Navy issued a bold challenge to solve their carrier space problem, seeking aircraft that could operate from escort ships without extensive deck modifications. The breakthrough came simultaneously from two competing designs. In 1954, Convair's XFY-1 Pogo and Lockheed's XFE-1 Salmon emerged as pioneering solutions, both powered by the 5,500-horsepower 5 Allison YT-40A-14 turboprop. Test pilot
Pilot James Skeets Coleman made history with the Pogo, completing 365 transitions over 125 flights during 1954 to 1955, while the XFE-1 program's engine delivery delays prevented full transition testing. Unlike other VTOL types, tail sitters required no complex thrust vectoring or rotating mechanisms. Using contra-rotating propellers for torque cancellation, these aircraft simply pivoted their entire airframe 90 degrees. The XFY-1 could transition from vertical to horizontal flight in just 15 seconds, achieving a maximum speed of 474 miles per hour at 15,000 feet. Despite achieving their technical goals, these aircraft faced practical challenges. Pilots had to land essentially blind, looking over their shoulder while descending vertically. From 1955 to 1957, the Ryan X-13 Vertijet attempted to solve this with a hover display system and a landing platform that eliminated the need for vertical descent, but operational complexity remained insurmountable. While the original tail sitters never entered service, their legacy endures through unmanned systems. From 2012 to 2015, NASA's GL-10 Greased Lightning demonstrated electric tail sitting with 10 distributed propellers. Earlier, from 2005 to 2008, DARPA's Tactical Technology Office TTO heliplane program explored a hybrid design combining tail sitting with autorotation capability for emergency landings, proving the concept's enduring influence on modern aviation. Hybrid Compound VTOL Aircraft The dream of hybrid VTOL emerged from a military necessity. The need for an aircraft that could combine perfectly a helicopter's battlefield versatility with fixed-wing speed and range. In 1965, Lockheed's AH-56 Cheyenne pioneered this vision, promising to revolutionize battlefield mobility with speeds beyond 250 knots. The breakthrough came through multiple innovations. Sikorsky's advancing blade concept, led by Arthur Linden in the 1970s, used counter-rotating rotors spinning at 450 RPM to overcome retreating blade stall. Piasecki's 16H Pathfinder demonstrated the compound helicopter concept's potential, reaching 225 miles per hour through its auxiliary propulsion system. Unlike conventional helicopters, limited to about 170 knots by retreating blade stall, hybrids break these barriers through innovative combinations. The Sikorsky X2 demonstrator proved this in 2010, reaching 250 knots, 288 miles per hour, while maintaining helicopter-like maneuverability. Each iteration advanced capabilities further. Boeing's A160 Hummingbird pioneered variable speed rotors, 140 to 350 RPM, for optimized performance at different speeds. Eurocopter's XP achieved 255 knots through its unique combination of conventional main rotor and wing-mounted propellers. Today's Defiant X, developed for the U.S. Army's future long-range assault aircraft program, builds on the X-2 technology. It promises twice the speed and range of the UH-60 Black Hawk, while maintaining the ability to conduct nap-of-the-earth flight and deliver precision fires. The global interest continues with advanced development programs worldwide, though references to specific Russian K-92 and Chinese ZX programs should be noted as proposed concepts rather than confirmed developments. Modern eVTOL configurations, the dream of electric vertical flight emerged from a modern vision, not of military might or raw power, but of sustainable, accessible urban air travel. In 2009, NASA engineer Mark Moore pioneered this revolution with his Puffin concept, imagining personal aircraft powered purely by electricity. The breakthrough came as multiple technologies converged. Advanced electric motors, developed by pioneers like Joe Ben Bevert at Joby Aviation, achieved power-to-weight ratios exceeding 5 kilowatts per kilogram. Modern lithium-ion batteries reached energy densities above 260 watt-hours per kilogram, finally making practical electric flight possible. Unlike traditional VTOL aircraft, eVTOLs offer distinct configurations. Lilium 7-seater uses 36 ducted electric fans for vectored thrust. Volocopter's VoloCity employs 18 rotors for redundant safety. Joby S4's tilt rotor design combines vertical lift efficiency with fixed wing range, achieving 150 miles at 200 miles per hour. As commercial development progressed, military applications emerged. The AFWR X Agility Prime program, launched in 2020, accelerated eVTOL testing for military use. Beta Technologies' Alia 250 demonstrated 250 mile range capabilities, while Archer's Midnight showcased rapid medical evacuation potential. Today's eVTOLs advance rapidly. The Air Force's AF4X program evaluates multiple platforms for tactical missions. Joby's military variant demonstrates 60 dB noise levels at 100 meters, enabling covert operations. Commercial certification targets remain focused on 2025 Urban Air Mobility Launch.